the astral plane. The astral plane, often designated as the fourth dimension, has not been created out of the four elements, but it is a density degree of the Akasha principle. Consequently, all that is occurring now and has its existence and regulation and origin comes from the Akasha principle. As said before, Akasha in its subtlest form is the aether well known to all of us. Consequently, this vibrational sphere is the origin of light, sound, colour, rhythm and life in all things created. As Akash is the origin of all existing things, all that has ever been produced, is being produced and will be produced in the future is reflected here. Therefore, in the astral plane, there is to be seen the emanation of the eternal, having neither a beginning nor an end, as it is timeless and spaceless. The adept who sees his way about this plane may find everything here, no matter the point in question be, it be it the past, the present, or the future. How far this perception will reach depends on the degree of his perfection. Occultists and spiritualists and most of religions name the astral plane the world beyond. However, the adept knows very well that there is no such thing as hence and beyond and feels no fear of death, which concept is quite strange to him. If, by the disintegrating work of the elements or a sudden breakup in the astral matrix, which is the connecting matter between the grossly material body and the astral body, if it has got loose, then what will happen is what we commonly, commonly call death, which however, in reality, is nothing else but a passage from the terrestrial world to the astral world. Backed up by this law, the adept knows no fear of death, being convinced that he will not approach this with uncertainty. Through his control and mastery of the elements, besides many other things, he also can achieve a slackening of the astral matrix, which will result in a spontaneous separation of the astral body from the mortal frame. So he will be able to visit the remotest regions in the astral world, transfer himself into various planes in the form of his astral body. This is the positive explanation of so many tales in which saints have been seen at the same time in different places and have even been working there. Now the astral plane has various kinds of inhabitants that live there. First of all, there are the deceased ones. According to their spiritual maturity, which is designated by the various religions as heaven or hell, the adept seeing only symbols therein. The nobler and purer and the more perfect an entity happens to be, all the purer and finer will be the density degree of the inhabited astral plane. Little by little, the astral body is dissolving until it has become suitable to the degree of vibration of the respective step of the astral level or identical with it. As you see, this identification depends on the maturity and the spiritual perfection that the entity concerned achieved while on the earth plane. Besides the astral plane, there is inhabited by many other beings. There are the so-called elementaries, entities which one or only very few qualities according to the dominant vibrations of the elements. They are living on the similar vibrations proper to man and transmitted to him by the astral plane. Among them there are some which have already reached a certain degree of intelligence and some magicians are using these low-powered beings for this selfish purpose. Another kind of beings are the larvae which have been brought into life consciously or unconsciously by intense sensory thinking or daydreaming or fantasy thinking through the astral matrix. 
They're not real beings, but only forms thriving on the passions of the animal world, on the lowest step of the astral level. Their instinct of self-preservation carries them into the sphere of those men whose passions are responsive to them. They will try, directly or indirectly, to raise and rekindle the passions slumbering in man. If these forms are succeeding in seducing men to give in to their supple passions, they are feeding and thriving on the emanations of this passion produced in man. Man laden with many passions will attract a host of such larvae in the lowest sphere of the astral plane. And a great fight takes place. And in the problem of magic, this fact plays an important role. There are also other elementaries and larvae which can be produced in an artificial, magical way. Another kind of being the adept often has to deal with in the astral plane must not be overlooked. These are namely the beings of the four pure elements. In the element of fire, their name is the salamanders. In the airy element, these are the sylphs. In the water element, they are called mermaids or undines. And in the element of earth, they are known as gnomes or goblins. These beings represent, as it were, the connection between the astral plane and the earthly elements. Furthermore, there is a host of other beings such as satyrs, wood maidens, water goblins, all living in the astral plane. Even if this all sounds like a fairy tale, on the astral plane, the previously described beings are very real. And the adept who has developed his clairvoyant eyes can see them all through a magic mirror or just being in nature. And he's also able to establish a connection with them. So excluding any doubt of the existence of these beings right from the beginning. That is why the adept has to ripen first and learn to examine before being able to judge. Thank you.